I'm Joe Halco, Director of Community Relations for Northwestern Counseling and Support Services, and welcome to another episode of NCSS Here For You. Since 1958, Northwestern Counseling and Support Services has been providing access to high quality services which promote healthy living and emotional well-being to the residents of Franklin and Grand Isle counties. Over the years, as the needs of the community have changed, so too have the programs and services that we make available to assist children, adolescents, adults, families, and seniors. We take our role in the community seriously and strive to provide a continuum of the highest quality services to meet the needs of individuals who at any point seek assistance. March is Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. Developmental disabilities are a group of conditions due to an impairment in physical, learning, language, or behavior areas. These conditions begin during the developmental period. They may impact day-to-day -day functioning and usually last throughout a person's lifetime. Many people who have a developmental disability are able to live full, active lives. The NCSS Developmental Services Division serves individuals diagnosed with intellectual disabilities, developmental delays, are deaf or hard of hearing, or have an autism spectrum disorder. A robust portfolio of services is available with the goal of having each individual live as independently as possible. NCSS has also been recognized for offering some of the most innovative programming in the state of Vermont. To discuss this topic in greater detail, I'm pleased to introduce this month's guests. Claire Thompson, Pathways Team Leader at the Academy of Learning, and Casey Carpenter, Team Leader for the Life Management Team. And I'd like to welcome both of you to the program. Thank you, Joe. Glad to be here. Thanks so, for having me, Joe. Let us begin with, uh, I had mentioned innovative programming just a moment ago, but innovative programming that includes the program for Catholic and Expressive Arts, the Academy of Learning, and a program for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. joy, the recognition, um, the camaraderie and encouragement between the community and peers, it's really priceless. Um, and I think another thing that comes out of that program um, is the art program, which is another fantastic way that our consumers have an opportunity to for self-expression mm -hmm. that may not be afforded to them. Um, it's, I think it's unique to NCSS, this program, which is really wonderful. So at each of those concerts, the individuals who participate in the art program get to showcase their work and the projects they've been working on um, through the course of the year. And it's phenomenal. It's really unparalleled. Um, another fun thing that the, that group has done in the past is um, in Swanton, I believe it's just in Swanton, but 
the town of Swanton allowed the consumers to go and decorate some of the billboards in town. So that was a really fun community project. <clears throat> there was a theme for that and people got together and put their artwork out in the community, which was really fantastic. So in the working with clients that I've worked with in the past, I've just seen incredible growth from the individuals yeah. in terms of self-expression, um, camaraderie, um, coming out of their shells and being able to say, look, I did this and it's really fantastic. So um, it's super important to our clients and a great way to connect with our community as well. Um, so that the the PAYEA program is is a really fantastic, fantastic program. Um, and that segues into that works with our programs for um, deaf and hard of hearing. We do have um, a number of clients who uh, are deaf and hard of hearing that we provide mm -hmm. services for. And those services are, again, unique to NCSS, where any services that a hearing person would have access to, someone who is deaf and hard of hearing would also have access to those services. And that's not something that happens everywhere. So it is really phenomenal that we have that. Um, we have staff who are, um, are fluent in American Sign Language. Um, we also have a wonderful woman named Maria Grenier who organizes interpreter services for the entire agency. Um, and so in any setting where that's necessary, she can coordinate having an interpreter available to ensure that all information is getting accurately passed along. Um, something else that's pretty unique and excellent that we offer is something called augmented and alternative communication. And a part of that under that umbrella is something called facilitated communication. So we offer um, an opportunity for folks who maybe do not have um, speech capabilities to still be able to express themselves through those, um, those methodologies. And that's pretty unique and pretty amazing. It's really what you see come out of people and giving the opportunity to express themselves after years of not being able to is, is really amazing. I can't say enough about it. So it's super important to everybody. Now, um, how extensive are developmental services, crisis services? Yeah, crisis services are um, really, so I'll say that in, in NCSS we offer what we refer to as wraparound services for our clients. And DS crisis services are a huge part of that. So um, while we have families and home providers um, and people who are primary caregivers who offer our consumer support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are times when you need additional support that are outside of regular business hours or, you know, just your primary contact support person may not be available. And that's where the DS crisis services step in. So that is um, a, a team of staff who are available at any time of day or night. Someone is on call and will return a call um, if support is needed. Um, and those people are uh, very well trained. Um, there's ongoing education and support for them to be able to provide the best supports in a variety of situations, um, crisis, pending crisis, or just needing somebody to talk to, to avoid a crisis. Um, the team works very closely with the service coordinators and other staff. There's a lot of communication back and forth to ensure that we're providing the best supports available. So um, anyone who has connection with developmental services and needs to contact crisis, uh, what they would do is they would call 802-393-6688 and someone will answer the phone and they would ask to speak with the on-call crisis worker and their phone call would be returned within 15 minutes. Um, and those are meant to be time limited, but intensive supports for individuals. And then again, communication is forwarded onto the larger support team. So it really fills in that wraparound services model. Yeah. The other thing is the crisis team is offering ongoing education, um, especially during the times of COVID when, as we all know, anxiety and depression and and, and upheaval has been increased. So they've definitely stepped up and filled that need for us, which has been incredible. 
That's terrific. Um, let's move on to employment for a moment here. You know, we know that it is so important for self-esteem. And could you explain um, the Employment Services Program and how it operates? Yeah, sure, Joe. Um, Nancy Taylor is the uh, team leader for the employment team. And she has individuals on her team that also that job develop uh, for individuals. And it can be a, a range of support. Um, you should, sometimes people just need help with job applications or resumes, but they also help individuals to find a match, um, to find a job that they that they like. And, and it, you're right, it is so important for someone's self-esteem to feel good about their job and enjoy their job. Um, she has job coaches as well as job developers who will support individuals on site if needed. Um, sometimes people need a little extra support um, to get started in their job. Sometimes it's only temporary. Sometimes um, it can be uh, consistent and someone may need support all the time. Um, sometimes people may just need support with transportation, getting to and from their job. And what, that's uh, what members of Nancy's team does as well. So um, they really have connected with many, many businesses in our community. And we have some great community partners that, that work with Nancy and her team and uh, help people to find jobs and maintain jobs. And like you said, it's, it's just great for individuals to, to have these have jobs and feel good about it. You know, and you mentioned uh, the community partners, the businesses where uh, these individuals work. And, you know, certainly what is so critical is the fact that we're so fortunate that so many local businesses understand the value and, you know, realize the fact that because someone has a disability does not mean that they can't help um, a particular business out to perform a certain function. And I, I think one of the things I've noticed over the years is how some of these business uh, people uh, are gratified by the fact that they can, uh, number one, help someone, but number two, that they see that this person really will do an incredible job. And I think the other thing that they find over time is the loyalty of these yes. individuals in staying with these organizations uh, probably far uh, exceeds that of the average employee that they have, you know, um, year yeah, in, year yeah. out. Yeah, I mean, Franklin County, the community has been wonderful working with Nancy's team. I mean, she they, she has relationships with many, many businesses from, you know, St. Albans to Swanton to Enosburg to Richford. And, and the community has just been wonderful in, in supporting the program. So uh, let's move on to, you know, there's a variety of clinical services to support both individuals and their families. Um, would you elaborate on a few of them? Sure. So the developmental services clinical team consists of clinicians and experienced staff who offer support and guidance to individuals served and their families and staff and contracted workers um, who work with them. Uh, the mission of the clinical team is to foster the well-being of the individuals served and to empower them to reach their full potential. The clinical team offers a variety of clinical programs that include uh, individual and family counseling, dialectic behavior therapy skills, training family life and sexual health, an internship program, and behavior consultation. Several developmental services therapists are fluent in American Sign Language. The clinical team is available to provide trainings on a variety of clinical topics. And Amber Scheffler actually is the in charge of the clinical services and is a wonderful clinician herself. And again, I think it's important to note that, you know, all of these services are so critically important to those that uh, we serve. And as Casey said earlier about the fact that NCSS truly does provide wraparound services for these individuals. Um, yes. Is, yeah. Yeah, I think critically important. All very important, yes. And it is, it, we do provide a great um, wraparound services, so, which is essential for people. So 
I understand that peer services uh, play a major role for individuals that are receiving developmental services. Can you explain some of the options that are available? Yes, absolutely. That's absolutely correct. We have a really great um, couple of opportunities for peer support services. And um, Randy Lazat is our peer support services contact person, and he's um, a wonderful advocate for people. Um, and he, if people have more questions about peer support, they can email him. And I wanted to make sure I had his email address correct. So it's, it's Randy, R-A-N-D-Y dot Lizotte. L I Z O T T E at N C S S I N C dot org. Um, and he is just incredibly knowledgeable about um, peer support and um, the process that people go through when they receive services from NCSS. Um, we have a group called the NCSS Peer Advocates, and they work very, very hard to provide incredible supports for other individuals receiving services. They offer to meet with anyone um, who is new to DS services as a welcome um, and to help them kind of navigate those initial steps in getting set up with services. Uh, there's ongoing mentoring and support. One of the great things that um, I think all DAs do is all of our treatment plans are person-centered. So we want that plan of care to come from the individual receiving services. And um, Randy, as a peer advocate, can really help people with, with navigating that, which can be a daunting undertaking for someone. Um, the other great thing that the peer advocates do is they offer a training to all of our new employees. Um, and it's kind of a look through our eyes, I think is what it's called. Um, and it presents um, what things look like as somebody with disabilities and what are the differences, what are the similarities. And it's been, I've gotten, heard a lot of great feedback from new employees and how helpful that training was um, to be able to really focus on person-centered and what are the abilities of the people that we serve and how do they view the supports that they're getting. And that's been a really fantastic program that they've started up. And then it's that's also a just a fun social group. Oh, go ahead, Beth. It's a great training, and actually all NCSS employees um, have to take that training. So it's really a valuable, very valuable training. Yeah. I remember taking it. It was powerful. Yeah. Yes, very powerful. Yep. Yeah. And then the, the peer advocates also get together to socialize. Um, so it's a great opportunity to create relationships. And, and in creating those relationships, um, you know, when somebody – feels that they want a little additional support, they have a peer to reach out to because they've made that connection in the social group, which is just really incredible. And their, their underlying message is, I've walked the walk and you don't have to do this alone, which what a great sentiment to pass along and, yeah. and to be there for each other. Um, and then, so our peer advocates group um, also works with a larger group called the Green Mountain Self Advocates. And Randy is actually the president of that group. So again, he's, um, he's a great resource um, for those two ad, um, advocacy groups. Um, the GMSA also um, does a lot with educating the public and our Vermont legislature, which is pretty incredible that they go and, and educate our leadership in the government about um, disabilities and needs and perspectives, um, which is really awesome. So and more information can be found at gmsavt.org that's green mountain self advocates vermont so it's another great resource yeah and i think as <clears throat> both of you have stated you know a critically important um to day in and day out uh how individuals with disabilities sort of navigate um you know day to day and as you mm -hmm. said, Casey, and especially in today's world uh, uh, where there's a lot of isolation and what have you, these uh, relationships yeah. that have been built up over time throughout the state, uh, I think, are uh, critically important. And mm -hmm. speaking of isolation and pandemics and what have you, um, I wanted to ask a question about um, what are we doing to provide supports during this pandemic period? I mean, we're now a good 11 months into it, and uh, I know that it's changed a lot of the ways that there's certain service delivery, 
uh, that's being conducted, but if you could just share uh, some of the things that have changed. Yeah, so obviously we've had to make a lot of adjustments with the pandemic as we all have. Um, but one of the things, because we can't hold classes at the Academy of Learning because of the pandemic, um, we have scheduled Zoom classes and we have just got this up and running. Um, we started at the beginning of January and we are holding classes um, every Friday and hopefully we're going to um, expand on this, but um, we're just getting off the ground. It's going really well. We are offering um, bingo to people on Fridays. We're offering um, some exercise classes, one Tabata class. We're offering chair yoga. Um, we're doing a fun um, activity with games also. And we are also offering a lunch social so people can be connected and not isolated during this pandemic. And we have, um, we've been fortunate enough to have some staff or um, individuals that we know come on and actually play music during the lunch social. Um, we've had several staff members and it's been a big hit. Um, it's fun, everybody sings and, and dances along through Zoom. So um, we've really worked hard to try to keep people connected socially. You know, during this time, it's, it's, it's really difficult for people. It's difficult for everybody. So we're working really hard to uh, provide services and make the changes and adjustments that we need to make during this pandemic. And it's been very well received and uh, we're just really excited that we were, were able to do that. And that having attended the lunch social, it was just such a highlight to see people I hadn't seen in 11 months. It was just yeah. such a highlight. I really, and Claire did a lot of work to get that all squared away. So appreciated by those who attended and it was really awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People were just so excited. Some people haven't, been able to even get out of their house, you know, during this whole time. So to be able to Zoom and see each other and, you know, just the excitement through people, it was just heartwarming. Joe, you should join us for a lunch social. You would love it. <laughs> I, I would like to do that. You know, I was going to say, you know, the pandemic has been on many different levels devastating for many people. But, you know, with every situation like this there's always things that come out of it that you say you now can utilize uh for good and i think the zoom platform video conferencing is one area that as we look at it and and look a year two years three years from now is that this platform is going to be something that you'll be utilizing in various ways and, you know, individuals who might not be able to say to make it into the academy at a given point in time, but yet might be able to join via Zoom so they don't miss certain, you know, certain topics and, and what have you. Uh, so, Great. you know, I kind of look at it and say that really video conferencing is one of the things that um, I think is going to come, you know, we're going to come out on the other end and say it's one of the things that we learn to um, you know, sort of embrace and be able to help us with service delivery for, for years to come. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it, it, it's great. It's uh, we're, we've actually, we're really fortunate. We were able to purchase some iPads mm -hmm. for individuals as well. So yeah. that people that don't have the technology to zoom can actually sign out iPads and so that they can join in these classes and activities. So we've been very fortunate in that sense too. And, and you are right. I don't think it's going anywhere. And I think it's um, just a great tool to keep people involved and engaged. Yeah. And I think that, Claire, you can probably speak to this as you're the one that's kind of been spearheading this, but it's also been a great opportunity for our community partners. Um, you know, we aren't able to meet in big groups like we had been previous to the pandemic. So it's We've done a lot of hard work to um, try to find spaces, particularly in the winter with the cold weather, um, spaces for people to be able to continue to go out with staff and work on their goals and things. So Claire has worked with our Elks Club and um, the Dairy Center up in Enosburg to provide spaces for us. And that has been a great partnership as well. And having, again, that community connection is always so heartwarming. 
Yeah, you know, like I said before, it's a great community that we live in. The Elts um, Foundation has been so wonderful in letting us use their hall um, so that people can have a place to be, to work on their goals. Um, it, it's just been wonderful. Um, they let us use their hall every single day, five days a week, you know, and they're just, um, they're closed themselves because of the pandemic, but they still continue to let us use the hall. And Lise Gates has been wonderful as well from the Dairy Center. She's letting us use um, a space up there at the bowling alley so that people can, can continue to be out in the community and work on their goals with staff. So I just can't say enough about, you know, the individuals that are our community partners that are just fabulous, mm -hmm. just very, just fabulous to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is for sure. Uh, let's switch now to um, how does shared living services work for clients? So shared living uh, provides persons with people with disabilities, the opportunity to live in the community with other supports, people or families. Uh, the support people or providers, as we um, call them, are screened and, and contracted by NCSS. Individuals live in a provider's home and are supported by a team and are compensated by a tax-free stipend. So it's again part of our wraparound services. The home providers are supported by a, a whole team, your service coordinator and your direct staff and everything. and. Um, just to be able to support that person for taking someone in and, and, and sharing their home with them. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's a great job and it's a great opportunity for people, you know, for both individuals and the shared living provider to um, be a part of a great, a great team and a, and a great, uh, a great program. Amy Bronson is in charge of the shared living provider program. So if anybody had any questions, they could reach out to Amy um, at NCSS. Um, and she does a wonderful job. Your, your home has to pass an inspection, um, but she works with individuals. And so if there are any, any adjustments that need to be made, then she's just really a great support person to assist people to help them to do that. And let's switch to respite services and, and how they work. Yeah, those go um, really in conjunction most frequently with the shared living services for our clients. And as Claire said, it's um, such a wonderful opportunity for our clients to live, you know, independently, but with supports in a shared living um, situation. But that is, um, a, that's a tough job. It's a 24 seven job to be a primary caregiver for someone um, with, and our clients have a, a wide range of abilities and needs and, and supports in place. So um, as you can imagine, getting a break is crucial. Um, yeah. It's crucial for the care provider and it's also crucial for the individual to just kind of have a chance to step away from each other um, and have that break. So for the care provider, it's an opportunity to do some self-care, um, take care of things that you need to take care of as an, you know, as an adult, um, getting through life and have a chance to really just kind of focus on themselves and trust that the person that they're responsible for is in a safe, um, and, and healthy environment. So those respite services, um, are really crucial that is done. The person who is the shared living provider primarily would set that up. They would find people that they could train, um, that they trust, that are loving individuals who are willing to support someone in there. That can happen either at the respite provider's home. That's usually the way things go, but teams are very creative and are focused mostly on what works for the whole team. So I know there are teams where the it works best for the um, consumer to stay in place and the respite provider comes to their home um, so that's also an option and works best for some folks we also at ncss do have a respite um, house um, that is fully accessible and has highly trained staff who are there um, it's a very popular option because mm -hmm. it's a beautiful place um, and it's it is. staffed and accessible. Um, so people do book that place out pretty far in advance, but 
that speaks highly to how successful it has been and the need for respite. Um, so that our, our Berry Hill Respite House um, is an option for folks that is, um, has been literally a lifesaver for people. Um, yeah. Having that break, it, it, you know, it preserves a relationship and the home to have that time off. Um, it's, is, as I said, it just can't express how critical that is, have a little mini vacation from things. And then you come back refreshed and, you know, ready to re-engage and you're a better care provider for having that break. Yeah, I think NCSS is unique in the fact that we do have a respite house um, that we are very fortunate and um, it's been up and running for a couple of years now and it has been used widely and has been just a great program and a great opportunity for people to get that break, which is, is so important. Yeah, and the care that's provided, as I had mentioned earlier, you know, our individuals have a wide range of needs. Um, and the staff at the Berry Hill House are fully trained and having worked with them several times are so committed to providing just the best quality care that they possibly can. So they're constantly getting training, constantly asking for updates um, and ensuring that, you know, they have the correct information for medications and care procedures and all of those things. So it's, again, it's that, um, that peace of mind for your, as a care provider, you're handing your individual over to somebody else that can be a little daunting. So um, having that trained staff has been really a godsend for, for people. Yeah. Well, and what a great way to end this, uh, this show um, on. So I wanna thank my guests, Claire Thompson and Casey Carpenter for being on the show today and sharing their insights as we highlight Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. I also wanna thank you, the viewer, for spending time with us again this month. You can learn more about all of our NCSS programs and services by logging on to ncssinc.org. I'm Joe Halco, and I'll be back next month with another episode of NCSS Here For You. <laughs>